Today we're gonna to make cumin lamb ribs. It's a popular dish in northern China, especially in the northwestern region of Xinjiang. It's super aromatic. The meat is fatty and tender. And on the outside, we coat it with a crunchy topping of cumin and other spices. So again, this is kind of cooking. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. We do sous vide recipes, experiments, and a lot more. So hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I especially love eating lamb in winter because it heats up your body. Yeah, for me, it makes me a little itchy. So it's only a winter food for me. I don't think I can do this in the summer. To even find these ribs, was quite an adventure. I think we went to like five different butchers. Which was surprising, but we ended up with the whole rack of lamb ribs. The butcher we went to, they were really knowledgeable. They were great. They helped us find the perfect cut. They actually took out a, another lamb for us to cut up the ribs and make sure we had the perfect piece. If you're in Toronto, you can check them out. They call Al Wala. I think I'm butchering the name. Butcher no pun up. intended. <laughs> What you have here is the loin and the rib, and this is what you usually get in your rib rack. What we were actually looking for was for this side, which is a breast side, and if you can find it, just get the breast side nice and thick with a lot of meat and a lot of fat on it. But we ended up with the whole thing, so we are going to try it with the entire thing. Okay, so let's get started. Um, it's actually pretty simple. We're gonna put it into our vacuum bag. So traditionally this dish is usually poached and I thought the sous vide would be an excellent application to tenderize the meat and cook it to the temperature we want. In Western cultures, a lot of the lamb is cooked to like medium, medium rare. rare, medium rare. But since this is going to be a traditional Chinese dish, we're gonna cook it a little bit higher. We're gonna go for a medium well to well done. Does it fit? Does it fit? Is that a show? I don't know, making it up. Yeah. So it's in. Now we just put all the aromatics inside the bag. We have some red onions, some smashed ginger, scallions, citron peppercorn, and two chilies. The ginger, the scallions, and the citron peppercorns, those will help to remove the gaminess of the lamb. We're going to seal it up and then put it into our water bath. Here's our lamb rib. It has come out of the sous vide. We've cooled it, we've dried it, it's ready to go. You want it to be nice and dry. Oh, and also we picked out all the citron peppercorns. Yes. You don't want to have like suddenly a bite of citron peppercorn and numb your entire mouth. And in retrospect, we should have probably put it into a spice bag. Yeah. That would have been the smart way to do it. So next time, just put in a spice bag, it'll be easier. So next step is to make the spices. So we use our trusty old spice mixer. For our dry rub, we have some fennel seeds and some cumin seeds. I'm actually going to take all of the fennel seeds and I'm only going to use three quarters of the cumin seed. And that's because I want a little bit of variety of textures in there. So we'll get this to a medium grind. Ooh, strong. So you want something along, along this lines. There should still be some big pieces, some small pieces. We put the cumin seeds that we didn't grind into the bowl as well. We have some chili powder, and we'll mix these together for our rub. I like to put my salt directly on the meat, that way I can control exactly how much salt I put onto it. Because if you put it in the rub, you are stuck with how much rub you can put on because it's already salty. Traditionally, usually it's oil rub that's rubbed onto the meat. I'm gonna try something a little different today. I'm going to use an egg wash, just the whites, because I think it will help to stick the spices much better. Okay, so go pretty heavy on it because we didn't put anything else on here. So the next we're going to put on the rub. Okay, and just pat it in. So we'll flip it onto this side and then we'll brush more egg wash. So we have a little bit of cooking spray. I'm gonna spray it on the top just to help it along. Ooh. If you don't have cooking spray, just put a glug of oil on the top. 
Just to help with the browning, right? Yep, exactly. I'm gonna put this up on a wire rack. Now this goes into a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. This is amazing. Look, it was good. Your chopping skill was a little... Yeah, I think next time we need to ask <laughs> them to chop off this end part. It was really difficult to chop through that. All right, cheers. Mm. The meat is really tender. So fatty, so flavorful. And you can actually... Shouldn't be talking about my mouth. You can actually sprinkle more of the dry rub if you want more flavor. Do a little bit of that. I'm very, very mm. happy with the results here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and the crust is so crispy. Mmm. I don't think I said a word. Either. Well, if you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and leave your comments below so we know your feedback. We'd love to hear what you have to say and that's how we can improve the show. So we ended up with a whole ram lib. So we ended up... <laughs> ram lib. <laughs> oh man. Oh man.